Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, Sir King Matthew, the solution to our math problems. Ghana teacher line section exam. The subject here is numeracy for the year 2022. Uh, we are given a preamble. Then with the preamble, we were told to use this preamble to answer question 22, question 23, as well as question 24. So let's quickly revise ourselves with the preamble. So the table has been given, and this table gives information concerning the number of JHS learners who voted for two candidates. We have Linda and then Messi during the election of girls prefects at the school. So as you can see, these are the two candidates, Linda and Messi. And these are the three different classes, JHS1, JHS2, and then JHS3. And these are the uh, number of votes each candidate amass at the end of the election. But for question 24, the question says that uh, which of the following graphs is most appropriate to represent the given data? So clearly this question is an statistics. And we know that in statistics, we deal with what? Data collection. So when you collect data, you see that data comes in a raw form and an organized manner. So what do we do? We represent them using uh, some of these graphs. So this question is about data representation. So even before we look at the most appropriate, let's quickly revise ourselves with data. So uh, basically the data that we collect uh, are of two kinds. We have data that deals with numbers and then data that deals with words or word description. And for now, we are going to focus our attention on data that deals with numbers. So in data, data that deals with numbers are referred to as quantitative data. So quantitative data, so any data we collect that deals with numbers are categorized under quantitative data. So for example, in the classroom situation, when you try to collect data on scores uh, gained by students in a particular test, because their scores deals with numbers, it's an example of uh, quantitative data. The number of students in the classroom deals with numbers, so it's a quantitative data. Temperature uh, of students, quantitative data, because they all deal with numbers. And data that deals with numbers are also of two types. So data that deals with numbers are also categorized under two. It's either a discrete or continuous data. Discrete or continuous data. So what is a discrete data? So discrete data is a type of quantitative data that are represented using counting numbers or whole numbers. So when you talk about counting numbers, you are looking at numbers from one, two, three, four, five, up to infinity. Whole numbers, we just include zero. So that is for discrete data. Data that is represented using counting numbers or whole numbers is a discrete data. So for example, when you collect data concerning the number of students in the classroom, it's a quantitative data, but specifically it's a discrete data. Why discrete data? The number of students in the classroom can only be represented using counting numbers or whole numbers. So the number of students in the classroom can be 10. There could be 20, 30, 40, 45, 48. We cannot have 20 and a half students in the classroom. It's not possible. We cannot have 30.2 students in the classroom. The number of students is only limited to 
whole or counting numbers. So that is a discrete data. You can also talk of the number of cars in a car park. It is discrete. It could be 10 cars, 20 cars, 30 cars. You cannot have one and a half car. You cannot have uh, 30 and a half cars. No, it's never possible. So all data or all quantitative data that are represented using um, whole or counting numbers is classified under discrete data. And one thing about discrete data is that the data can only be collected by counting. In most cases, the data is collected by counting. So for example, as we have already looked at the number of students in the classroom, to get this data, you have to count. Number of houses in a particular town, you have to count. Number of cars in the car park, you have to count. So because the data is collected by, in most cases by accountant, it's also a discrete data. So that is the two key words that will guide you to identify a discrete data. So one, discrete data is so, can be collected by counting. Two, discrete data can be represented using counting numbers or whole numbers. That is all under discrete data. Now, on the other hand, continuous data, we are talking about data that can be represented using counting numbers, fractions, that is common fraction, decimals, sometimes even negative numbers. So, for example, the height of students in the classroom. So, you can have, let's say, 160 centimeters. You can have 160.5 centimeters it is possible you can have 1.6 meters you can see that there are decimals so because it can assume decimals it is a continuous data you can also talk of the mass of students in the classroom you want to check their mass you can have let's say 30 kilograms you can also have 30.2 kilograms 30.5 kilograms so because we are having decimals in them, it is classified under continuous data. So that is the difference between discrete and then continuous data. So now, back to the question. So this data here, is it a quantitative or qualitative data? We are looking at the number of votes. Number of votes. So obviously, it is a quantitative data because it deals with numbers but which category of quantitative data is the number of votes so obviously it is a discrete data why because the number of votes were collected by counting so that is one way two the number of votes are represented using counting numbers or whole numbers so this data here is a discrete data and when it comes to discrete data, the graph that is, or the graph that can be used to represent a discrete data from this particular question here is bar graph and then stem and wave plot. So for now, bar graph, and then stem and wave plot, they can be represented using uh, a discrete data. But between the two, between the two, which of them is most appropriate? Which of them is most appropriate? Now, one advantage that bar graph have is that the bar graph can be used to represent discrete data that is in more than one category. Discrete data that comes in more than one category. So now, for example, although the number of votes is a discrete data, but this particular discrete data has three different categories. And because it has more than one category, that makes bar graph the most appropriate graph to represent this data. So for question 24, the right option is in. Now, histogram and line graph, they are best used to represent continuous data they are best used to represent continuous data so the most appropriate is bar graph because the information here is a 
discrete data and this discrete data comes in more than one category you see that we have dhs1 dhs2 dhs3 so because of that the bar graph is the most appropriate uh, graph for representing this data thanks for watching see you next time